Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering Kickoff Day Number One, checking in with Team Number Three O Two, the Dragons, Kerry Division winners, also winning uh, Sanders Sterling and Jackson as well too. Phenomenal season for Three O Two as they come through. Uh, love the overall just compactness, simplicity, and efficiency that this robot brings. Of course, we'll be talking about intake all the way through to your arm. Uh, they got some cool short drive covers. We'll be talking about a little bit more about programming. Let's learn more about the Dragons coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Eddie, let's start out on your robot talking about your intake here. I really just like, I watched this on the field. It just seems very efficient you've gone through. Talk about how you came up with this intake, how it's been working out for your team so far. Yeah, so we really started in January. We dove deep into the intake. Um, you know, we had multiple groups making a prototype for each intake. We ended up with about maybe eight or nine different prototypes of our intake. Um, and we really just tested and we discussed for weeks on weeks of which intake we thought would be best. And eventually we ended up um, going with a passive intake, which we took to our first district comps um, where we won... Um, oh like Jackson was your first one you Yeah, won? Jackson and Standish. Um, and then eventually before states, we decided to switch to an active intake just so that we could pick up more efficiently. It would be easier. You wouldn't have to hit the cones or cubes perfectly every time. Um, so that's really what we kept until now because it's working great. Let's say, what have you noticed from like switching from that passive to the active intake on there? Have your cycle times gotten quicker? How's that worked out? Cycle times have really gotten faster because like I said, you don't need to hit the cone or the cube perfectly every time. You can just kind of get a general in the vicinity and it'll just pick it up every time it's great uh, and if we can see this demo a little bit that'd be great i'd love to just see how that intake works but as that's going on I, I gotta talk about with the dragons you got a pretty dope dragon on your robot so you talk to me about that thank you so um our cat team actually produced it themselves along with the solenoid covers which you guys will talk about um it's really just a solenoid cover and it just looks fun i like it there, so there's no you know to me it doesn't add extra like plus two luck to your nope. robot or anything like that i mean i think it personally does but you know there are some people who don't believe in that juju but one thing i want to ask you too as we saw your arm come out i know you're on a platform right now so yeah. it kind of wobble a bit have right. you had any stability issues on the field and if so how have you had to combat that um we've had a little bit of tippy but our code has been anti-tip um which we really use a lot and then we also added a lot of weight um, to our actual robot. I think there's an added at least 13 pounds heavier than our practice bot. Um, we just really have to add weight so that it doesn't yeah. tip because it is a little bit top heavy just because of all of this chain and all of the motors up on the top. So it makes it a little bit top heavier. So we really just have to combat that by adding these weights here, down under. Oh yeah, look at all this ballast down here, yeah. yeah some on every side just to combat that. And then we also have the battery in the back so that it will combat the tip as well. Let's over Spencer is going to be talking about the uh, covers on there. I'd uh, love to hear more about uh, what these covers are. Is there any benefit to using something like these on your sword drives as well? Uh, and just uh, how can teams create something like this too? Um, so these right here are sword covers. Um, this year was our first year that we switched to MK4i modules. So um, we haven't really worked with them before, but we thought a possible problem would objects being falling into the gears of a swerve that's has nothing on it. So these have a functional aspect and a, um, a static aspect. So first of all, we like to have our sparkly green on them to make it look pretty because it covers up the gray boring that Swerve covers can usually look like. Additionally, they can stop um, parts from falling in to the Swerve covers and they stop junk from getting in it. As well as we have our Swerve covers so they can hold our CAN boards. So built in, we have the CAN boards that can mount, and uh, it also provides a cover for them 
to make sure that they don't get damaged and they're right up close to Swerve and not bumping around. What material are you using for these? Um, we just use PLA. One issue we did have is we were using the lowest infill possible. We had 5% infill. Yeah. Um, so then even when we were taking the Swerve covers off manually, they would snap. So I think up now we're up to like 50% infill on our PLA and that seems to work just fine. Awesome. Love it. Is this something that, uh, like, uh, do you have documented anywhere? Can teams find out more about this? Um, we don't have it anywhere, but I would be happy to do that. Yeah, Maybe post it up. Love, I love to see that on there. Love and, uh, to see, yeah. Make sure you uh, follow up, uh, take a look at Dragon, see if you can find that later on. Let's start to wrap up talking about uh, programming as well, too. Sierra's going to be covering uh, more of that uh, as well. And love this here. I know uh, we'll be covering Pathfinder a little bit uh, and what you've been doing overall for programming, too. Let's come and take a look. Okay, so right now the screen that we're on is our drive station. It gets us everything ready that we need for our matches. So like we have our view of our battery and then we can select our autons down here and then we have a view of the field, which is nice. So then we can see our camera too. Okay, so down here is where we choose our auton. We have a bunch of drop downs, like where we start, the co-op position next to the human player or next to like the bump side. And then we have whether we want to park on the charging station or not. And we also have the number of game pieces or in which game piece we're going to start with, which really helps us narrow down our autons because we just have so many. So what we use to program our autons is a program called Path Weaver. It lets us draw out our vectors on the screen and then it will calculate our points on the grid for us so that we don't have to manually go into our code and then put in every individual point. It helps us a lot for tweaking it and then getting those vectors down so we don't have to do all that complex math. Can we go back to your other interface you had up just yes. a second there? I want to ask you, I, I was looking at I saw your camera on here is actually canted on yes. this. Uh, does your camera rotate during the match or anything, or why does it appear like this on screen? No, it uh, stays like that during the match, and we use our camera for detecting our game pieces, which we use with our machine learning, and also for April tags, so we can help line up to the scoring station or the human player station, and it helps us get nice and straight so we can get those game pieces. Awesome. Well, the Dragons, thank you so much for taking time to tell us yes. more about your team and your robot. We're so excited to see yes. what you bring for the crescendo season, but congratulations on a great charge up season. Really earned it. Can't wait to see what you bring later on. Thanks thank a lot. You. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.